Hello everyone, my name is Chiranjeev Bhattacharya. I work in the Department of Computer Science and Automation in the Institute of Science. My research is on machine learning. You can find more information about our work in our website mllab.csa.isc.arnet.in. Uh, if you have any questions about this talk or uh, anything about my research, you are welcome to email me at the email address chidu.isc.ac.in. So, today we are going to, I am going to tell you about an interesting topic. So, this is called topic models. So, what we will be doing is we will sketch the genesis of topic models as it has progressed over this last three decades. So, we will start with uh, something called latent semantic indexing of uh, in short is called LSI. And then there is a new variant which is, uh, which is now widely used and very popular called latent Dirichlet allocation. This is an example of what we call as probabilistic topic models. And then of late there has been significant interest in deriving mathematical guarantees on probabilistic topic models. So, which was often called as provable probabilistic topic models. So, this would be uh, the uh, topics of discussion uh, in the next uh, 30 minutes. So, let us first see what are topic models. So, topic models essentially are interesting tools or, or interesting subject in machine learning. So, these models attempt to discover hidden themes in document corpora. So, often uh, in late uh, 1970s when large or other collection of documents began to emerge, people started to think ok, how can I build automated tools which can extract or, or let us say even um, retrieve uh, documents. So, that is where all this started and people thought that if you can discover themes that might be very useful in retrieving documents. Now, if you have themes, they can be also used for you know labeling documents. So, labeling documents means this document is about sport, this is about cricket, this is about history, this is about geography, this can be a huge help in retrieval. As you see based on this both these examples, these kind of models are essential to build large scale search engines. So, that is why these, these models have are, are in the forefront of modern day web search industry. So, the challenge is to build such models without supervision that is you just give a bunch of documents you also you only have to identify are they do they belong to the same theme or not. Now, nobody has nobody will tell you that oh this this is a theme and you go find that theme. So, uh, the real challenge is to solve it where you have no inputs in the sense that you only have an you only have some document corpora to begin with and from that automatically you have to figure out that these documents are of some themes and there is other documents of some other theme, this is about cricket and this is about uh, let us say history etcetera. So, this gives a very interesting challenge to us in machine learning community that how do we build such models which are accurate and yet uh, with minimal in human input. So, let us uh, briefly see some examples to motivate uh, these topic. So, suppose you are told there is a document, the document has the following five words run inning hit season game. Now, I ask what is the document is all about? Then I think most of you will agree that this document is something about cricket or baseball. You did not ask uh, that oh where are the nouns and the verbs and what is else. So, just the occurrence of these five words told you a lot of things. You think ah this document will likely is going to be cricket. So, that is basically the theme we are talking about. So, for example, if you see another document where the following words that cup minutes add tablespoon oil, maybe it is about cooking right. So, if you see the computer software system Microsoft company etcetera right. So, this this probably about is about computers right. So, patient drug doctor cancer medical is again so like healthcare. So, we have we, we have such examples like this. So, in the real life if you can see that if there is any document which has this following words the run hitting eight season game you can say ah these are like similar themes right and then the theme could be about sport, cooking etcetera. So, the things in blue are what we attach as labels. Now, the real challenge is to discover uh, these uh, bunch of words that which describe a theme in, in a sense run inning hit season game or you know patient drug, doctor, cancer, medical etcetera. So, 
So, since since this development in natural language text, the uh, these uh, the the genesis of topic models are in natural language text. However, they have today they have gone beyond text. So, this has been widely used in image processing. They have also been used in uh, understanding videos. Surprisingly, they have been also used in software engineering, where people are now trying to ask that just because I look at the soft uh, look at the code, can you say without running the code, what will the code do? very interesting results are coming up in software engineering where people are finding the topic models are um, uh, giving very interesting results. So, the even uh, uh, even uh, they have gone to more esoteric or, ex or exotic things like even understanding music. So, this is just to this is a sh uh, this I would think is a very short list of what probabilistic topic models can do. Uh, in this talk, we are not going to touch upon these applications rather we would like you to walk you through the basic fundamentals of topic models. So, we begin with a corpus. So, corpus is nothing but a collection of documents and let us say this is a corpus of English language texts. So, as you know English language is described by words. Let us assume there is a dictionary sitting uh, uh, sitting with me and so all words in a dictionary consist my vocabulary. So, let us say that you see each of the column represent a document. A document is nothing but a collection of words. So, we will just count that a particular word has as it occurred in this document or not or how many times a document a word w has occurred in the document d. So, you see the rows of this matrix would correspond to the words in the vocabulary. So, if a doc so uh, a vocabulary may have 10,000 words, uh, but a document can only have say 200 words right. So, this means in this column there will be lots of zeros and uh, it would be non-zero only where a word occurs. Now, for simplicity you can think like this that every time the uh, you can count the number of times a word occurs and they can normalize it. So, that they sum to 1 etcetera, but there are many such possibilities exist. So, however, uh, the point is that we can take a corpus and represent it by a matrix and this would be very useful for our further analysis. So, now uh, as we said that we will we'll try to represent this uh, a number of words uh, sorry the dictionary by uh, uh, this uh, by v. So, each document is represented by a v dimensional real dim, uh, v dimensional real valued vector. So, now you can use any function you like, but for now for this talk you can think about it that we are representing each things by the count of the word uh, count of uh, individual words. So, we can also do more fancy things like TFIDF scores etcetera. So, if you want to know more about what things we can use, you can look at this very nice textbook by Manning, Pro Raghavan and Stutze. So, these things were first pioneered by Jerry Salton in 1975. So, let us if we are given a document, let us let us call the document Q or the query document and there is a corpus of documents denoted by index by D. So, you can say that I want to retrieve the documents which are closest to the query document Q right. So, you score each document D with the query and the squaring function is something like uh, as given by this formula is nothing but the cosine of these two vectors. This was the first instance of uh, an automated retrieval system. Now, this was this this was working this was working somewhat good. Now, if you see if you think about it now if you represent uh, instead of the counts if you represent each uh, uh, the representation of a q or a d rather of the dth document as presence or absence of a particular word occurring that is the vector of a vector a d consists of only 1s and zeros, and it is 1 only if a particular word has occurred you will see that it is looking for keywords right. Now, this keyword search had two problems mainly there are other problems when for example, if your corpus has only documents describing automobiles. Now, if you search for a car right though they mean the same thing, but your algorithm will not return anything because it could not find the word car in your corpus because all the corpus had only automobiles right. So, this is a problem of called synonymy. Uh, then this other problem called polysemy for example, in your corpus there is only documents describing cricket as a sport. Now, suppose you are interested in cricket the insect it will not be able to find such the words find such suitable documents it is only going to show up documents about cricket which you may not be interested in. So, the synonymy or polysemy etcetera was not addressed by 
this previous LSI model, uh, these problems were essentially one of the driving forces that why people are unhappy with the information retrieval system built previously. So, to explore more then the the thought that maybe the way to do going past this is that see around cricket uh, to understand cricket the, the different between cricket the game or cricket the insect maybe there are other words around that. So, uh, in a cricket the game there will be words like batsman, innings, sports etcetera. So, this word can help us in identifying that this is about cricket the sport and whereas, cricket the insect will have other words like forest, jungle etcetera. So, the deal is that can we exploit this co occurrence uh, of words to resolve this problem. So, this being uh, so this brings us to the first topic that is LSI latent semantic indexing. So, in LSI again as we said that we will start with a document uh, corpus represented by the matrix A which is uh, R is V cross D where V is the number of just to remind you V is the vocabulary words and uh, D is the number of words in, a, in the corpus. Now, one of the premise is of LSI is roughly as follows that maybe though they have a large number of documents, but the documents have only very few themes. If so, we do not have a definition of theme yet, but if so, they are basically they are co occurring words right. So, basically most of the vectors may look the same hence A may be low rank. So, this is one of the ideas of course, uh, they people pursued and then they did the following and they said let us do the following then. Let us so one way to understand uh, rank is to do an SVD a singular value decomposition of the matrix. So, what they did was that you take the, the corpus the document corpus document word document matrix A and do a singular value decomposition of that where U is orthogonal matrix of size V cross R where R is the non zero. Uh, singular values of A. Sigma is a R cross R matrix which is which contains all the non zero singular values and S is another uh, orthogonal matrix R cross D you know, which is the, the right singular vector matrix of A. Now, A can be written as now this can be simplified and written as uh, sum of R rank 1 terms which is sigma i u i s i t where sigma i is nothing but the singular values u i is the ith column of uh, u and s i transpose is again the corresponding uh, element in s. So, armed with this so they said that ok you should not be looking at uh, these things. So, if you want to look at the um, uh, so wha what we should be doing is that instead of instead of looking at the the vanilla representation obtained through A matrix, we should try to project it along uh, these uh, rows and columns obtained through the SVD matrix. So, you take the query document, you project it along uh, U matrix or, uh, and so in short the projection is given by A q hat k uh, 1 by sigma i u i transpose k a q u i all right. Similarly, you project all the documents on this uh, uh, singular values uh, matrix what we saw right and then what you do is you compute the similarity between q and d via this formula. Now, this code worked out to be very well and they could do better. So, for a synonymy and polysemy was concerned. Now, this gave a uh, this gave a this idea that Huh. So, you should not be using the vanilla representation A, but you should if you do this SVD type decomposition it works well. So, maybe it occurs co occurrences and people said ah maybe it is catching semantics and they call it latent semantic indexing. So, the idea was that this was this idea worked well. However, there was no clear understanding until this very seminal paper by Papa Dimitri et al, where they said that this works well if you assume that there is a notion of a topic and a topic is described by a distribution over words that is a, a theme describing cricket has very high weight on the word like inning, season, head, game and very low weight on the remaining words. So, that is what you define a topic and each document has only one topic. Under such situations 
what uh, they, sh uh, they showed that if you assume that each document is generated as follows, that is you first pick a topic that there are let us say k topics, you pick any one of them. So, cricket, say, cooking, etcetera. So, if suppose you are, so what you do is roll a k face dice uh, and suppose the word cricket shows up, you pick that theme now and now, now that cricket de defines a distribution over words on the vocabulary. So, you roll, you take another dice and then you start rolling it m times. So, that is now each word shows up, for example, the word inning shows up, you say okay, this word is occurred in the document and, and so on and so forth. So, under that mo generative model, suppose the corpus was generated, then they showed this very interesting thing uh, that rather I will quickly jump to the other slide. So, where they showed that if two documents have the same topic, then the similarity score is very high. You can look at this formula here. Uh, if they are, are related to different topics, you see the similarity value is low. So, this stood as the first explanation of why LSI worked and because of this, the, uh, and, the, and this idea of topic came into being. So, they showed that if two documents have the same topics, then um, the similarity score is high. If they belong to different topics, the similarity score is low as given by this formula. So, this served as a very convincing explanation of why LSI works well and then it also illuminated the idea that you need a notion of a topic, those are the distribution over words. Now, then people were started thinking that look, the LSI's premise is each document has only one theme or, or as they defined it as a pure corpus. Now, here is a good example. You see, this is an article taken from a blog. So, in this blog uh, article, they were explaining how computer algorithms can identify the paintings of a very famous painter, in this case Jackson Pollock. So, this is an article which talks about both arts and computer science. So, obviously, models like that is not going to work here. So, so then how do I address this issue that a document must have multiple topics? So, this led to this new idea which is now popularly called as probabilistic topic models called latent Dirichlet allocation, LDF for short. So, in the next few minutes, we will describe that model in detail. So, between the paper showed earlier and LDA, there were several attempts. So, notably first one was again by Hoffman. So, he, what he tried to do was he tried to build uh, again a probabilistic version of LSI, where um, uh, you, you really try to compute the likelihood etcetera of the model. However, it did not address the issue of multiple topics per document. An attempt came by uh, a little later than latent Dirichlet allocation, uh, which is known as gamma Poisson model. This was another attempt where John Canny uh, tried to attempt uh, a model with some different data distributions, namely Poisson distribution on the word counts, etcetera. We will not cover that. We will rather cover uh, this uh, paper by a seminal paper by David Bly et al. Uh, known as latent Dirichlet allocation. So, this model assumes the following that, uh, so you see on your screen uh, what is known as a plate diagram of a graphical model. So, if you are confused what graphical model is, uh, I would recommend uh, some textbooks, I will suggest in the, uh, in the supplementary, in the reading material. So, so, for now assume the following. So, this describes the generative model. The model assumes that uh, there are m documents, each document has n words, capital N words, right. And the way you generate a document, we generated this document, this document has n words, remember. So, what you do is you choose a distribution over um, uh, your topics given by this vector theta, theta is a vector. So, that means these elements all sum to 1 and uh, they are each number between 0 and 1. Now, once you generated this topic distribution, uh, what you then do is you pick uh, the to generate 
this n words, you pick the first word, you generate the first topic for the word, let us say topic is cricket, then, then you take the cricket dice and roll it and you get the first word coming out, maybe it is innings, right. Then again you say, ah, then you again choose another topic for the second word and so, and so on and so forth. So, beta is general, it is uh, the topic matrices, alpha is hyperparameter for theta. For this talk, let us not bother about what they are, you can read it up in this nice paper where they have written all these distributions, uh, all these things are done in much more uh, mathematical detail. The idea behind this slide is to introduce you to this model. So, essentially the model is saying the following, each document is drawn from a mixture of probability distributions uh, which is as, as I denoted by theta. Now, each topic is essentially a distribution over words in the vocabulary as we know given in Papa Dimitri at all. And then the topic assignment that is to a particular word is given by this variable z, right. And then a word is sampled from the corresponding topic uh, beta indexed z, right. So, that is essentially the model. Now, uh, the mathematical details are as follows. So, we, so we need a distributional assumption on the uh, on the, on the vector theta. So, theta is often given by a Dirichlet prior, Dirichlet is given by this formula. Uh, so, once we have this uh, theta vectors defined, the model can be written as, uh, as we said is that the assignment vectors z are a multinomial of theta, while as the word uh, from the topic is also given by a multinomial in the uh, given by beta z n. Now, given this model, we can now define a likelihood of a joint likelihood of theta z and w given by this formula. Now, the question is here you see what we will observe, we will observe only w this value this, this vector w, w is basically the collection of words in a document. Now, we then need to understand what is the value of theta and z, this is sometimes called the inference problems. So, now while learning we would like to know that what is the likelihood of this word or this document w, right. And the likelihood is often obtained by marginalizing over all the our latent variables that is our z's and uh, uh, theta. So, that is coming uh, and that is given by this formula here, right. Unfortunately, this is a, a very difficult integral to evaluate and is often intractable. In, in fact, it is NP hard. Uh, so, without getting too much into the choices of the uh, distributions, uh, so here is in a nutshell is uh, the LDA model as we said this is a summary of the thing which we just talked about. So, LDA model is essentially a graphical model where uh, it defines a full generative model that is a generative model in the sense that it will end of the day if you take one sample you will probably get a document under uh, where each word has its own topic drawn from a Dirichlet vector. So, the interesting thing is the topics might change from word to word. So, this allows you allows us to fit multiple topics per document, right. Now, as we said, right, so now given a document which is, which is indexed here by w, so the question is that what is the value of theta and z? This is often sometimes called the inference problem. So, in the inference problem, we need to compute the posterior distribution of theta comma z given w and alpha beta suppose are known, right, but actually even alpha beta would not be known. Now, to do alpha beta to find out the alpha betas, where remember the beta is a topic matrix, we can do maximum likelihood, uh, maximum likelihood to entail solving a problems like this, right. Now, here what we could do is we can resort to uh, various techniques, uh, approximation techniques for that matter. So, the inference problem often um, has uh, uh, many varieties. The, of course, what David and uh, company suggested was initially something different. Uh, they suggested a, vari suggested a variational scheme. However, you can do other things for example, Gibbs sampling, collapse variational inference uh, uh, and you can see a comparison with, with variational methods in this interesting paper. Uh, and then this has been even uh, used for large scale uh, large corpuses. Uh, mainly online variational inference by Hoffman and Mr. LDA etcetera. So, there is a long line of work now where people are trying to build large scale inf approximate inference tools. So, in this uh, discussion we will not get into that, but we will probably uh, tell you a little bit of naive approach which is the first approach which David uh, in the original paper it was there. So, what they proposed was the following, he said they said that the intractability often comes because the 
the interference between this variable theta and z. So, I said that one way to do that is to approximate this distribution by assuming independence between theta and z. Of course, one might think that this is a, a rid ridiculous idea. However, this is as I said this is an approximate scheme and often it works well. So, uh, so basically one can show through the variational inference mechanism that uh, one can indeed compute uh, uh, I will not go through these formulas in detail uh, because these are already there in this paper where we can read that up. Uh, so, so the key idea is that that it allows us to compute parameters gamma w and phi of w where w is your word document um, uh, given document uh, and then one can compute this distributions q of theta given gamma and q of z given phi to compute an approximation of p theta given z right. So, uh, so then once we have this we can resort to that EM algorithm where we compute parameters gamma and phi keeping alpha beta fixed and now once we know gamma and phi then we can find them by maximizing uh, you can find alpha beta by maximizing f. So, now uh, so often one might say that this is a uh, this is a reasonably bad approximation, but uh, but uh, but in practice it works beautifully. For example, here is a document which talks about which which is something to do with I guess smartphones, uh, but you see the, it captures very interesting topics such as uh, you know this one topic you can see the word Android, Google, Nexus, tablet, phone, etc., which possibly means it's a topic related to Nexus tablets, right? another is about phone. So, you see this document clearly has three topics right. So, one is the, the blue colored one is about nexus where the green colored one is this and we are trying to also uh, you know color code those words. Uh, so, the words here compact is green colored which means that is generated from a topic belonging to that phone uh, topic whereas, this word like retina was be, uh, because of this nexus uh, things. So, one can draw even more interesting annotations uh, uh, like for example, here is one more doc this example you can find in a tutorial given by David Bly. So, where he says that uh, you take a uh, take a document with biology and then you can easily fig figure out these topics and you can also see which word related to which topic etcetera. Which you did not get time to cover is to figure figure out provable guarantees that is if there is indeed a probabilist in this uh, there is a topic uh, a ge uh, model generated by some true topics can the algorithm discover them. These are often called probable probabilistic topic models. So, this is a fantastic fascinating area. So, essentially there is a new interest in deriving strong guarantees where one can certify that the topics recovered by this models are actually indeed the true topics and if so how many samples do I need etcetera. It is a fascinating area where uh, traditional theoretical computer science is um, uh, collaborating with machine learning community in understanding this problem. So, as we were trying to argue the tropic models are very powerful tools for information retrieval that is interesting, but I think for a country like India this has far more important ramifications. You see the models we discussed does not require understanding of a language. So, this India is a country of many languages. So, I think this is a fascinating tool which can break our language barriers. In fact, there is research coming out uh, where you can take uh, news corpuses in Bangla and figure out what are the how is the corresponding news reported in another regional language called let us say Kannada or Hindi or Tamil. So, I think this is a we are uh, this is a very fascinating area which can make a lot of contributions uh, not only in research, but also help in our um, uh, uh, you know day to day scheme of lives. So, again thank you for listening. Uh, I hope uh, this will get excited, uh, this talk will help you get excited about uh, using topic models. Thank you.